Okay, continue on from the last one. This video, we're going to make the game controller for our tic-tac-toe. So let's go back to Unity. We're still in the prefab here. Um, you know what? Uh, we can actually stay here for a second. We want to go to our grid space script. And in the player side for now, let's just put an X in here just so we can test a few things. And then we're also going to want to add... Uh, right on here, we want to add a on-click event. And then we're going to drag the same grid space into here. And then on the grid space, we're going to select, what do we call it? Set space. Uh, so what this is doing here, this is in the prefab. So basically every button that we have, it's going to look to its own component for, for that and get that information. So it, it calls in on the same script that's on that button. So we can exit out of this prefab now, go back to our game. And if we test it, we should be able to click and put an X in each one of these now. There's something straight. Oh, you know what? I think it might be the text field being over it, um, that it doesn't ray trace through it, but we can check that later. But at least this is working here. Okay, so the next thing we're actually going to do is we're going to want to make our game controller. Uh, so we're just going to make a separate object for it, call it game controller. We'll reset the transform on it. And we're going to add a script called game controller. Once it adds on there, we'll open it up. Okay, so again, we're going to need using Unity Engine.ui and using TM Pro. I think we can get rid of those for now at least. Okay, and what we're going to want to do here first is we're going to make an array of the text mesh pro type. So we're going to do is it? yeah, text mesh pro UI. And we'll call this, I think, this is what they call in the tutorial. We'll use the same thing. Uh, and we're going to need the serial. You know what? Uh, in the tutorial and all the others, they're making it public, so we'll just do it public. But we could have just serialized that. Okay, so what we're going to do with this is let's go back to our game, let it compile for a sec. Okay, so it makes the array here where you can set the number. So you could set it to like five and then you could, you know, drag in things manually. Um, what you can also do is lock the inspector so it won't move if you select other things. And what we can do if we go to the canvas and hold alt and click, I think that should, oh no, it won't. I thought that would expand all of the children. Guess not. Okay, so we got to open these all manually. I'll have to look it up. There, there is a shortcut you can do that opens all of these at once, but I can't remember what it is. I think I saw it on one of like Bracky's videos or something. But what we'll do is, since we got that locked, uh, we want all of these to be in order when they come in. Um, you know what? Looking at this, the size that might be what's doing that click thing that was off. So we can check into that later. But yeah, these all need to be in the exact order. So we'll just manually do it instead of searching for them. That's what they do in that tutorial. And um, one thing I was thinking the next game I want to make is uh, the old board game Battleship. But I'm thinking I'll do it like this. But instead of manually making all these, I'll, I'll automate it where it's all created in code. So every grid on the board will be a button like this. But instead of manually clicking and dragging and stuff, we'll just do it all via code. So, okay, so we can unlock this now. Okay, so we should have all of those. Uh, you know what, let's go back to our game controller. Let's just confirm each one's in the right order. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight. So yeah, if you click them here, it'll just highlight which object it actually is in the, the hierarchy so you can see to make sure it's the right one. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is in the game controller, we're gonna uh, push a reference of the game controller to each button. So let's go back to our game controller. So a lot of stuff you could do like in grid space here. Uh, you could do in start and or awake. You could actually just do like a game object dot find or find object of type and then find the game controller. But this one, since we have the list of buttons and the way they do it in the tutorial, which I actually really like, I'm gonna use that a lot more in the future is uh, since we have the list here, we're gonna push it from here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is let's make a method, call it something like set controller on you know, I'll do set controller on buttons I think so we'll do that and all we're gonna do in here is use a simple for loop I equals zero I is smaller than um, what is it button list dot length I plus plus type today I'm still missing one yeah okay so in here we're just gonna do button list I dot get component but we got to do get component in parent because uh, we're we're storing all the text which is a, a child of the button so we got to actually look at the the parent so on the parent we're gonna look for Grid space, I think we called it. Yeah, yeah, our grid space script up here. We're gonna find that. And then on that, we wanna do, we're gonna, we haven't made this yet, but uh, it's gonna be set controller. And then we'll just pass in this, which is this whole script object. So that should work fine there. And then what we'll, we'll need to do is in awake, we'll just want to call it. So set controller on buttons. Okay, so that should be good. Uh, I kind of did that one backwards. I should have made this first, but. Okay, so in here, we're just gonna do, you know, we're gonna need a type. So let's do a private game controller call it my controller and then we're gonna make that method so avoid set controller and in here all we're gonna do is my controller equals controller we just got to pass that in Again, doing this in the proper order makes a lot more sense, but we'll do game controller, controller. And then my controller equals controller. There. So yeah, that was kind of a weird order of doing that in, but it all works out. Okay, and then what we're gonna wanna do, let's go back to our game controller. Is that not what I called it? Oh. Yeah, we gotta make it public. Okay, so that should get rid of that. Okay. So what we're gonna wanna do, we're not actually really gonna use these yet, but um, just so they're here, because this is gonna be something we always wanna use. We're gonna make a public string, get player side, they called it. We're gonna do the same. And then for right now, we're just gonna do question mark, like in the tutorial. So all this is gonna be used for is every time you, you do a click, it's gonna check what side is currently playing. So in the end, it's gonna be either the player or the computer, but basically it's gonna return either an X or an O. Um, we're not really implementing it yet, so it's not gonna actually do anything yet, but at the end it, it will. So uh, it's a lot easier to at least put the, the method in. You know what, we could even put a, Put it like to do this will return the letter or this will return an X or an O based on which player turn it is. Just so we know what we gotta do there later. 
Okay, and then we're also going to make an end turn, which won't do anything yet, but it will later. So we'll do to add code that ends the current turn. Okay, so we have that. And then what we're going to do here, just before we test anything else, let's go back to our set space. So this here where it does uh, the button text equals player side, which uh, is just a string we're storing here. We're actually going to get rid of that. And let's do my controller, which we have now. And then we'll just do get player side. Oops, there we got one. So since we have this method that's going to tell it where the game controller is, we can get that every turn now. Uh, so let's do that. And then at the end, let's do my controller dot end turn. And then later, every time this is done, it'll just tell it play a different turn. Okay, so let's go and test this. And with the way we set it up, every square should display a question mark now. Okay, so yeah, I think that is that that text box I saw earlier. So I'll fix that in the, the next video. Okay, so we got a question mark. So yeah, the, the click areas are, are definitely off there, but that's something with the Text Mesh Pro. We'll, we'll fix that up. Uh, we'll leave that for this video and we'll just save it and carry on in the next one.